Hello, I'm Sky Matsuhashi, founder of SmartPokerStudy.com, the place for poker players who are always striving to be better today than they were yesterday. Poker people, make sure you listen to episode 77, where I showed you how to work out your opponent's 3-bet calling and 4-betting ranges using 3 specific HUD stats and 3 important questions. Hey, poker people, it's a bonus episode for you today. Yepers, a little something special to boost them poker skills. And of course, thank you all for what you do, you know, sharing the show, asking questions, leaving comments, hitting subscribe in YouTube, all that jazz. I appreciate all of it. Alrighty, so today I'm reading an article from Nathan Black Rain 79 Williams called How to Tilt Lesser Skilled Players at the Lower Stakes. I came across this article back on July 4th, just a few days ago, and it was on uh, pokernews.com. I was really impressed by this article, and it occurred to me that this is perfect for my audience, and I figured the best way for me to share it with all of you is to actually read the entire thing, then throw my comments in at the end. So the author, Black Rain 79 Nathan Williams, he has a website at www.blackrain79.com, and he puts out tons of micro-stake strategies there. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel as well as, you know, he's written like a couple really good micro-stake strategy books. One is called Crushing the Micro-Stakes, and the other is called Modern Small Stakes. Uh, this guy totally knows his stuff, and he is a great one to learn from. So if you if you don't know of him, you know, go to the show notes, and I'll have links to to every one of his things, you know, all that he does right there for you to click on. And so this article in particular, it stresses something super important, basically attacking the weak players to earn money from them. Everyone knows that the weak players are where the money's at, but we can often forget this and tackle anyone at the tables, you know. But with a dedication to tilting the weak players, if you put your mindset and your focus on this, you'll be putting yourself in a great spot to profit from every table and every session that you play. Also, by thinking about what makes these weak players, you know, what makes them good tiltable targets, it might wake some of you up to the fact that you have some of these same characteristics and that you should work on ditching these. All right, so we're about to hit the article, but make sure you go to the show notes page for everything I discussed today, including all the links to everything I mentioned at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod78. Uh, while there, you can sign up for the weekly boost for exclusive strategy content delivered directly to your inbox. <laughs> All right, so the article was by Nathan Blackrain79 Williams entitled How to Tilt Lesser Skilled Players at the Lower Stakes. So here goes. My approach to the game of poker has always been very simple. I am there to play against the bad players, a category that in the lower stakes games is often comprised of casual or recreational players. I know that this is where the money comes from in these games, and so my attention when playing in them is often entirely focused on this group of opponents. But just being at the table with a weaker player is not the end goal. Sure, this is a good situation and you will turn a profit in the long run, but your real aim should be to stack the weaker opponents before any of the other regular players can. This is why one of my main goals when playing against the recreational players is putting them on tilt. Note, I am not referring to behaving badly in order to throw others off their games. That's a huge no-no. Rather, I'm referring strictly to playing in such a way that tends to frustrate opponents, especially lesser skilled ones, causing them subsequently to play even less well and make more mistakes. When somebody's on tilt or frustrated with me, then that player is much more likely to pay out like a slot machine when I finally hit something good. In this article, I am going to explain exactly how I go about tilting lesser skilled players with the way I play against them. You need to have position. Putting players on tilt is always going to be a million times easier when you have position on them. This gives you the ability to raise their limps, 3-bet them, float them, bluff them, and bet much more. The process of tilting someone really is all about being as annoying as possible. Again, I'm talking about being annoying with your bets and raises, not with your behavior. This is infinitely easier to do when you always get to act last. For this reason, when playing cash games, I will go to whatever links I can to make sure that I have position on the lesser skilled players. 
This also means that I typically avoid all forms of speed poker online. In these games, you're moved to a completely random table every single hand, which makes it impossible to maintain position on anyone. In these games, it's also very difficult to build up a playing history or dynamic with any of your opponents, because they might only be at your table once every 10 or 20 hands. Weaker players like to limp, I like to raise. Now that we have position on such an opponent, what do we do? Well, players like this tend to limp into the pot a lot. They like to play as much as 50% or more of the hands that are dealt to them and see a cheap flop whenever they can. The easiest way to start building up a desired dynamic with a player like this is to start raising them widely. They will get frustrated quickly when you con consistently prevent them from seeing their cheap flops. I will raise their limps with a wide range of hands that I typically refer to as anything remotely playable. What is my anything remotely playable range? Any pair, any two Broadway cards, most aces, most kings, most suited connectors, most suited one gappers, most suited two and even three gappers. You get the idea. I am raising wide. One consideration here is that it is important to have docile regs, regs behind you. If you have aggressive regs to your left, then there is no way that they're going to let you keep getting away with isolating the weaker players with a range this wide. Luckily, though, most regs at the lower stakes are fairly passive. Continuation bet the flop a lot. Your approach on the flop should be fairly simple. That is to say, take the aggressive approach more often than not. When my opponent checks to me, I will be making a continuation bet most of the time. This is especially the case early on in our playing history because I expect the player to give me more respect. It's important to note that if I get called on the flop, I will often shut down on later streets, especially if I have nothing at all. If there is one thing these players love to do, it's call a whole lot. Don't try to bluff them off their middle pair. It won't work. The real key here, though, is that they will miss the flop most of the time, which means you will often take it down with a simple flop c-bet. Also, even if they hit the flop, we could still get lucky and hit a draw or spike an overcard later in the hand. Since we have position, we will get to control the entire pace of the hand. Essentially, the deck is stacked in our favor, and that is why we will win in the long run with this approach. When lesser skilled players go on tilt. If you follow this approach of raising widely before the flop versus this category of players, then betting the flop a lot, you should be able to take down the majority of pots. This is because, once again, they will miss the flop most of the time. This will lead them to get frustrated, which of course is the whole point of this little game. As we build up a history with these players and take down several pots, they will start to get more aggressive in some spots because they want to get back at us. A lot of the time, these attempts at aggression will come in the form of silly bluffs, but it is important to refrain from getting involved in a big pot with them unless you have a good hand. By good hand, I don't mean having the nuts at all. I mean having as little as top pair no kicker. As our opponent's bluffing range opens up, our bluff catching and value betting range needs to open up as well. We don't need the mortal nuts in order to play a big pot against them. Should you be lucky enough to find a big hand during this stage, example aces or kings preflop, a set post flop, etc., the chances of you getting paid off in full go way up. Final thoughts. Many people forget these days that the money in poker comes from the bad players. It should therefore be your goal to focus on those players and stack them as quickly as possible. You do this by getting actively involved in lots of pots against them and hopefully even tilting them. It is important to remember, though, that while these players often lack a solid understanding of the game, they're not stupid. If you sit there waiting for your aces all day before ever getting involved in a pot with them, they're not going to give you the big action that you want when you finally make your hand. As the old saying goes, you have to give action to get action. The best way to do this is by getting position on the weaker players and raising and betting a lot, especially in the early stages of the hand. Eventually, you will make a big hand or even just top pair, and you won't have to worry much about getting paid off. All right, and that concludes that incredible article by Black Rain 79 So let me give you my take on it, kind of section by section. So first he talks about playing in position. And this is a great point, of course. He mentioned it a couple times, but in position, you control the action, and this can set off those weaker players, start to put them on tilt, you know, when you're constantly raising and being aggressive against them. And a key thing about being in position, of course, is you need to know who the weak players are. So when you're playing, make sure you're looking for limpers 
and those passive callers post flop. You know, you want, you want to kind of put your focus on a guy who is in maybe 50 to 60% of pots. You know, those guys play a ton of hands and very passively, those are your targets. And I like his take on the drawbacks of speed poker as well. Uh, I never play speed poker. The sites that I play don't offer it. So I never really, I haven't given much thought to it, but it totally makes sense. You want to build up these dynamics with the weaker players. You want to keep position on them. When you constantly get switched around, uh, it seems like speed poker, while it increases your volume and lets you put in a ton of hands, it might take away some of that, or not might, it definitely does take away some of that positional um, positional benefit of staying in your position and keeping position on those weaker players. So I really like his point there about the drawbacks to speed poker. So the next session section, he talked about raising. And I love the idea of raising anything playable, especially against those limpers or maybe those guys who come in for a min raise who are weak players, you know. And so please, I recommend everybody to do that. If it's playable, start playing it, of course. And it's a great point about when raising more, it's best to have docile regs to your left. You know, those aggressive regs won't allow you to isolate the weaker players as much. They'll be three betting you off of your wide isolation range. And it's best not to even attempt it when you have those aggro, you know, lag tards or donks to your left. The next section he talked about was sea betting. And I love the idea of lots of sea betting. I talk about that a lot, of course, See bet, see bet, see bet. Not 100%, but pretty darn close to it. Especially when you're in position on a guy, and most especially early in the relationship, like he says, quote unquote relationship. He talked about maybe he used the word dynamic, um, you know, at the table. But early in the relationship, he's going to give you respect. If he calls your raises, he's just making a bigger pot for you. If you could take it down with a simple see bet, great, do it. And one other point that he said, don't bluff the stations. He said guys who call down with second pair, but I call them stations. Uh, don't bluff them. If they're going to call you down with bottom pair or second pair all the way, don't even attempt it. Be a one and done player against guys like that. You know, unless you have a great hand, go for value. And uh, another thing about the C betting was you get to control the pace of the hand, which kind of plays into raising preflop and being in position as well. Those are all parts of, you know, controlling the pace of the hand. The next section he talked about was just putting them on tilt. And it, and you know, he was absolutely right. You want to play your big pots when they start to go on tilt. Play big pots with good hands. Don't play big pots with second pair or an under pocket pair and that kind of stuff. If he's putting in money, he's either bluffing you or he thinks he has a value hand. So just assess your hand strength versus his possible hand strengths and either go for value or ditch the hand, you know. And he made a great point when you're when you're going for value it doesn't have to be the nuts top pair weak kicker becomes great as you know as they're tilting because they'll fight back with many worse hands and with a lot of bluffs as well so in conclusion he said people forget that the money in poker comes from the bad players and he is so right about this i want you all to ingrain that in your head uh, stamp it on your head, tattoo it on your forearm, whatever you need to do, um, because this is absolutely right. And that's why this article is so important. Uh, the article kind of reawakens us to this fundamental idea of exploiting and profiting from the weak players. So I recommend that you really follow this advice and we'll have, or when you follow this advice, we'll have positional advantage, skill advantage, and maybe card advantage in every hand that we play. And even without the card advantage, you know, because we're opening, not opening but we're raising such a wide range uh, we still have post flop skills to make up for not having this card advantage and one thing that he didn't talk about but that we can kind of infer from this whole article is that there are some characteristics that he lists of recreational and weak players so let me go over this list right here and um, let's see if any of these apply to you Weak players play out of position, you know, so they don't care about position. They get tilty. Uh, they get annoyed by aggressive players to their left. They limp a lot. They play too many weak hands, and they passively call too much post-flop, or they fold too much to see bets from aggressive players. So my big takeaway from this whole article, um, other than trying to attack the weaker players is you don't want to be one of these weaker players. You know, if any of these characteristics apply to you, you play out of position, you're tilty, annoyed by aggression, you limp a lot, you play too many weak hands and you're a station, uh, you know, a post flop calling station and you give up to see bets too much. Those are all characteristics of weak players. If you see these characteristics within yourself or in your own play, do your best to ditch them. So, 
the whole article was geared towards taking advantage of the weak players. I want you to also concern yourself with not being one of those weak players. He makes... Mm, he makes a very good case that these weak players, that these characteristics are exactly what you want to take advantage of. So if you have them, ditch them. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. In the next session you play, pick a weak player and purposefully try to tilt them. Follow what BlackRain79 says here and do the following. Number one, play in position. Number two, raise with anything playable without aggressive players to your left. Number three, C-bet a ton, especially in the beginning with this new player. Uh, number four, don't pay off with crap hands when they start committing chips to the pot with bets and raises. And number five, go for lots of value with good hands when they appear to start tilting. Now it's your turn to take action and scooby dooby do something positive for your poker game. Now get it on. So, of course, if you're not already there, head on over to the show notes at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 78 for links to everything I mentioned today. And don't forget, this is your last chance. Don't forget about Split Suits Hand Reading Lab, my exclusive hand reading webinar for those who purchase the lab using my offer code SMART is coming up this Saturday, July 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific. This is your last chance to purchase the lab in time for the webinar. So get on it. Visit www.splitsuit.com com slash hrl and use that offer code smart in lowercase to receive the course as well as split suits popular video series called playing three bet pots and you'll have access to my one and a half hour hand reading webinar coming up this saturday i don't want to hear any whining after saturday about you know you missing the webinar just send me your purchase confirmation and you will be enrolled it's just a few days away so don't miss your chance i hope to see you there Thank you so much for listening today, and thank you to Black Rain 79 for writing such a great article. Everyone, please let Nathan know that you got a lot out of his article by tweeting him at Black Rain Poker. Let him know Sky sent you. I want your feedback as well, so hit me with it through the show notes, or you can send an email to sky at smartpokerstudy.com. Tweet me at Smart Poker Study, or post in the Facebook group at smartpokerstudy.com slash discuss. And please send me them questions, leaks, or ideas for podcast topics through all the channels just mentioned. I've been receiving some great ideas recently, and so I'll be coming up with some killer podcasts at your request very soon. Alrighty, poker people, be sure to come back this Friday for another Q&A where I answer some of them questions. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing the show with other poker peeps. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. 